Hello. For those of you who are blocked by the paywall, I'm going to do Christine Reads Her Column for you again. This could become a series. So, and, but you don't have to watch my face because I, I'm gonna hold it up really close because my eyes are really bad, so. Um, just, just listen. I hate to be cliche, but I'm going to be cliche and tell you a proverb you've probably already heard a hundred or so times by people who didn't consider themselves cliche. There was a frog and he saw this pot of boiling water and said to himself, I'm not going there. I'm not crazy. A few days later, he saw another pot of water and it looked rather lukewarm. Since the frog wanted to take a quick dip and he was far from his lily pad, he jumped in and started doing the backstroke. It felt good and he thought, this isn't so bad after all. And as he was splashing and swimming and enjoying himself, he didn't notice that the water was getting warmer and warmer and even warmer until the bubbles started popping up around him. He was slowly becoming used to the heat and the bubbles seemed normal until he ended up on somebody's plate with a stalk of asparagus on his belly. The moral of the story is that what seems shocking at the beginning becomes less and less shocking the longer we are exposed to it. I felt a bit like that frog the other day watching the news out of Georgia. The immediate past president was just charged with election interference by a grand jury. The district attorney stood at the podium and looking like a deer in headlights announced that 19 ham sandwiches had been indicted. One of them was Donald Trump. The flippancy in my tone is an example of how the novelty of this thing has completely worn off. The first time the once and he hopes future president was charged with paying hush money to a porn star by Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, I was horrified. I even wrote a column about how we were treading into dangerous waters when the current president's likely political opponent was being prosecuted right before the election season heated up. I mentioned that as an immigration lawyer who often dealt with clients from countries where they killed the opposition, including Ecuador, where they did exactly that last week, I was worried about heading in this direction. And then it happened again when a federal grand jury issued a 37 count indictment against that same ex-president of hoarding and concealing classified documents. This time it was in Florida and special counsel Jack Smith accused Trump of deliberately trying to obstruct justice by avoiding subpoenas. The fact that 7,000 other people or 700,000 other people were also guilty of holding on to classified documents made no difference. This was the Donald and he is in a class by himself. By this point, I was disturbed, but not as shocked and offended as I'd been a couple of months before. The water was getting warmer, so to speak but it was only June. Then at the beginning of this month, the federal grand jury in Washington indicted the former president on charges of election interference in connection with the January 6th riots. Special counsel Jack Smith comes out and makes a compelling statement about how Trump incited mayhem, forgetting to mention the part where the former president had asked his followers to quote, protest peacefully, end quote. The water by this point was scalding. I didn't see the bubbles, but that might have been because I was looking at Mika Brzezinski's face and trying to figure out how many more surgeries it would take before she ended up looking like a hammerhead shark. Meow. Yeah. And then on Monday evening, the world stopped and waited and waited and waited until a grand jury in Georgia issued its own indictments on election interference. And there I was with third degree burns and not even caring because I was used to the heat. This may seem flippant to you, and you might be wondering why I'm not diving deeply into the legitimacy of each of the four, count them four, prosecutions opened against Donald Trump. That is because I am not presumptuous enough to believe that I can explain better than most other lawyers who actually do deal in criminal proceedings, the relative strengths and weaknesses of each case. I can say that the Alvin Bragg and classified document cases are by far the weakest because if we prosecuted every man who ever had a fling with a happy time girl and then tried to hide it to keep mother from finding out, we would run out of court stenographers. 
As for the classified documents, until I see Mike Pence and Joe Biden in horizontal stripes, I'm not worrying about the likelihood of any conviction on that front. What I am interested in is the way that Americans seem inured to the very real dangers of piling on prosecutions of men who may have been unethical, amoral, and annoying, but whose conduct does not justify the onslaught of what now looks like political prosecutions. It is possible that the ex-president engaged in actual election interference, although you have to prove intent. To me, the guy seems like he actually believed he'd won the election. He's likely wrong, dead wrong. But that subjective belief is not out of line when you consider that many other Americans agree with him and they're not all Stepford voters. I do not agree with the folks who are saying that this is the end of democracy and that our country is sinking into the same despotism that gave rise to Putin, Mao, and Trujillo. Look him up, he was a better dressed Castro. What I am saying is that it's very dangerous when people start treating multiple serial indictments of a former president as just another headline or story of the moment on cable. This is serious stuff, something that has never before happened in this country. And as Arthur Miller wrote in Death of a Salesman, attention must be paid. And unless these persecutors, oops, did I say persecutor? I meant prosecutor. Unless these prosecutors really do have the evidence and aren't trying to engage in their own form of election interference, we, my non-amphibious friends, are cooked.